Hey guys, Anthony here. I am just going to briefly go over what you should do when you get a Naze32 board from quadquestions.com, how to solder it, how to set it up. So uh, I've got these two here, and essentially what you're going to get from me is you, you'll get the Naze32 uh, flight controller, and you get some pins to go with it if you order this. So the very first thing you should do when you get this is make sure that you're de-static. Uh, I do this on an electrostatic uh, safe workbench. Obviously you won't have that at home, so uh, just before you touch the flight controller, touch a piece of metal or something just to make sure that you ground yourself so that you get any static electricity potential charge off of your body. And so uh, I say that I do not warrant these after they've been soldered and it's because once they're soldered uh, things can happen during the soldering process where you can actually really mess up the board and obviously I mean that's if, if you're not comfortable soldering it just pay the ten dollars have me solder it I'm more than happy to do that for you and then you have peace of mind when you're setting this thing up so first thing I'm going to do here is just plug this in. Oh, so you need to make sure that you've downloaded the STM32 drivers, and I'll show you how to do that here. So to download the drivers, when you open Base Flight, you see here it's the welcome screen. When you've got nothing connected, uh, it says latest CP210X drivers can be downloaded from here. Click this. It takes you to the Silicon Labs website. Then you can find the driver for your system. If you're on Windows, download the driver there. Follow the prompts to install. If you're on a Mac, same thing. Download the VCP driver and install it. Uh, Linux, Android, all that stuff's on here too. So, so once you've downloaded the STM32 drivers and you're all ready to go to test this board, uh, all you need to do is uh, make sure that it's on a non-conductive surface and then just plug it in to your computer. I hold it level, but this is how you can make sure that it wasn't damaged during shipping. So the very first few seconds of it will be kind of uh, choppy. And then once you see this flashes there, then you know that it's active and it should roll according to your position that you have it on your computer. Uh, then the other thing that I like to do just to make sure that it's good is head over to the raw sensor data tab and just look at all these guys and just make sure that they're not bouncing around too bad. Uh, they should be pretty congruent with your movements. If you move it a lot you should see the graphs move but if you're still it should stay still. Uh, but that means that this board is all set and ready to go so uh, it's tested good. Okay, so here we are. No. Now's the time to solder this bad boy. And uh, it comes with these pins here. You should have the three position angled, uh, two position either straight or angled depending on uh, what's in stock. And you should have the two uh, straight pins, and then you've got your your row of five, and the row of five is the row that I like to do first because when I have this board on a flat surface, I can just solder it just like that, and uh, it that makes it easier. If this thing's floating out in the air, it's a lot harder to uh, solder. So anyway, I make sure that the iron's nice and hot, and then I use pretty thin solder. It's uh. 63362 rosin core solder from Radio Shack. It's just cheap silver bearing solder. Um, but basically, what I'm going to do is just work on these pins here. And this can be kind of challenging. I think this is the hardest one out of all of them. So, what I like to do is make sure that I have a nice sharp tip on my soldering iron. And get some solder on it and then I am just going to get in here and 
I'm just going to touch my soldering iron to the very top of the pin and I'm going to kind of hold it there and apply pressure and then I'm going to go in at the side and that's where I'm going to put my solder. So I'll see if, if I can't get this so that you can really see what I'm doing here. Just so you can get an idea of how to do this effectively. So, I'm going to start just right here on the second one. I'm going to hold my iron against the pin and then kind of rub the solder in on the side until I get a good flow. And that's all it takes. So, uh, once you've seen that, uh, I'll start doing it again. But see, you've noticed I've let this thing cool and I've just got a nice bead of solder on there so now I'll go ahead and do the others again just I'm putting my solder into the side here Let's see if I can get this so I'm putting my solder in this way on the side of the pin and I'm pushing down on the top with my iron and there it goes it flows nice and it only takes a little bit so now I'll continue and I kinda jump around so that I don't overheat the board in any particular place. I'll just hit all these. And that's that. So uh, once you've done one side, go ahead and just flip it over and do the other side. Same way. Hit the side hit the side. One of the other things that you're going to notice is if you put your solder directly on the soldering iron it kind of explodes into a big uh, smoke ball. So the key is to get it hot and then actually apply the solder to the hot piece of metal that you're heating with your iron and not necessarily directly to the iron itself. Okay so that's done. Now we'll go ahead and do the same thing here. Just put your soldering tip on both pads and then just apply a little bit of solder and it does not take much. And then put the three position one in, just like that. So again on this one, just put a little bit of solder on the tip of the iron, and then touch it just like that. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. And I'll just go to town. I kind of do this one in rows. Go over to this side. You can see the solder gets sucked in and that's what you want. And I always take a look to see if there's any that I missed. And it looks like these two just need a little bit more. You can't really hurt it if you reflow your pins a little bit. So. That looks very nice. So this one, I'll save the center pin for last for the TX and RX. So here you can see 
I've got the TX and RX pins here. Clean the tip again. Put some solder on it. And then just get these guys. Voila. And that's how you solder a NAS32. So again on this, I need to make sure that I get the flux out from in here. Let's see if you can see that. Probably not, but there is flux in between all these pins and that can cause a ground loop. So I like to take a toothbrush soaked with rubbing alcohol and just rub it against the, uh, the board there to try to get the flux off. Again, being careful to not soak the barometer too much with this. And you can't really hurt the components on the board when you do this. Um, as long as you don't power it while there's alcohol on it, you should be fine. And then on the top side, again, I like to be careful not to get any alcohol on the barometer so I just come over here and get the top side of these pins and the final step is to just take your paper towel or your rag and just wipe up the residue Cool. That's that.